Hi, my name is Mike Foley. I work in the vSphere Tech Marketing Team. My focus is on vSphere Security. Today we're going to talk about our new release, vSphere 6.7 and Virtual TPM. Now a TPM is a trusted platform module. It is used to store credentials. It is used to do crypto operations. So the question I get all the time is, can we map the virtual TPM, a virtual TPM to the physical TPM? So let's dive into TPMs and how we implemented virtual TPM. So let's start first with your typical server. And in that server, we have a TPM 2.0 module. In a previous video, we showed how ESX uses that TPM 2.0 module to provide measured assurance of a trusted boot of ESX. Now the TPM 2.0 module is really not designed to have hundreds of virtual machines accessing it. Number one, it's a serial device. It's very, very slow. Sometimes the crypto operations can be done measured in multiples of seconds, upwards of 10 or 11 seconds in some cases. The other thing is that the storage on a TPM is measured in kilobytes, very, very tiny. So if you think of the scenario where you have hundreds of virtual machines, you're just not going to be able to map to that serial device. And then when you think about, okay, what if I have another ESX host and I want to move that virtual machine, how do I get all the credentials out of that physical TPM and into another physical TPM? It's really, really complex and, and honestly just not worth the hassle. So what we've done is by providing a trusted boot, we then create a virtual TPM. So within a TPM is a digital certificate. Let's put DC. So where does that digital certificate come from and what does it do? Well, when you buy your laptop or your server and it has a TPM chip, the TPM vendor has loaded it with a digital certificate or a series of digital certificates in order to provide a unique identity for that TPM. That way if I sign something using the key within the TPM, I can validate that it was signed by that particular TPM. So how do we do that with a virtual TPM? Well, when you, cr when you add a virtual TPM device to a Windows VM, a digital certificate is, all is automatically created by VMCA and provisioned for that virtual TPM. Just like in the hardware scenario, where that digital certificate in that piece of hardware, the TPM chip, doesn't chain back to its originating certificate authority, the same is true here. The digital certificate <coughs> doesn't have a method to chain back to VMCA or whichever CA has issued that cert. That allows, the, the digital certificate here is purely used to provide a unique identity to the virtual TPM. Now the other issue we have, as I mentioned earlier, is storage. So the storage of credentials within the virtual TPM. How do we secure that? In a hardware TPM, that's done using hardware, uh, a hardware vault within the TPM. And as I me mentioned, it's measured in kilobytes. Within the vTPM, what we've done is we've mapped that storage to the NVRAM file that is part of all of the virtual machine files living on a data store. Then we encrypt that NVRAM file with VM encryption. So that means in order to support virtual TPM for your virtual machines, you will need to be running VM encryption which means you will also need to have a third-party key manager. We have a number of third-party key managers uh, that are supported. Uh, you can check those out on the HCL. So, the key thing to remember here is a virtual TPM lives with that virtual machine. If I move that virtual machine from one host to another, the virtual TPM encrypted 
is also moved with that host. If I remove that virtual machine from a data center and load it up in another data center, that other data center only has to point to the third party key manager to decrypt that virtual TPMs and VRAM file. I hope this helps clarify how virtual TPMs provide better support for Windows uh, 10 and Windows 2016. Thank you. Okay, so you've just gotten a lot of information on vSphere 6.7. There's even more information at blogs.vmware.com slash vSphere and also vSphereCentral.vmware.com. Thank you.